Hey, my name is Justin Abel. I'm here with STL Tones. We're doing episode four of the Mix Creative series. We're gonna be talking all about post-production elements and how to get those to sit in your mix. So let's get into it. So I think it's easy to get caught in the weeds a little bit when approaching post-production in a mix because most of us are using software synths, uh, whether it's you know, Serum or Omnisphere or you know sampler modern sounding uh, synths, or if they're you know maybe digitally modeled analog synths like a you know a, Ju a Juno or Jupiter. Uh, Mellotron, um, you know, other classic synths that we all know and love, strings, pianos, it goes on. Plugins today sound awesome, and, and the sounds that these instruments put out uh, sound good and finished, and so it can be hard to know what to do, maybe other than a fader move or a corrective EQ move. So that's what we're gonna talk about today, just how to get synths to sit into a track and um, and bring life to a production. So. The song that we're using today is by an artist, Bo Bascoro. The song is called Wildfire. I produced and mixed it. Absolutely love this song. Excited to, to share it with you guys. So um, yeah, let's dive in. Okay, so here's the session. It's laid out exactly the same as the, the other videos that I've done in this series. So all of this, these are just stems of the rest of the session that we're not looking at. Um, and then... Um, inside of this synth sum folder is all of the synths and post-production uh, stuff that we did. So I'll just play the song from the beginning so that you can just get an idea of what the song sounds like and then we'll start breaking it down. Sometimes I take the wrong directions Because I like the longer drive Take the chance to clear my head Then you fill the space instead And the music gets too quiet It all feels like a broken record I change the song but I'm still tethered Like it's all there is to me I try turning off repeat They say once always forever a thousand lightning bolts inside my head Trigger every nerve So super cool vibe to this song. I'll skip forward just so you can hear kind of where it ends up getting to. Here's second chorus. A thousand lightning bolts inside my head Trigger every nerve So really cool indie pop track, uh, lots of layers, but but the the majority of the song kind of stays at the same level. At the end, we'll get to it. There's this string stack that comes in and it gets very grand sounding, but uh, yeah, the intention of the song is to kind of uh, to kind of feel like very stripped and um, yeah, kind of like non-impressive throughout intentionally. The start of the song is this Mellotron chop that uh, that I made. And so, without plugins. So, super cool sound. Um, it's just being really, like, really lo fied out. And um, I'm assuming that these plugins are just, like, adding some drive. Um, yeah, and I'm actually. Um, using lo-fi pretty heavily. So I'm pro I'm just gonna, I'm gonna leave lo-fi on, but let's just open up Control Hub and see, uh, see what we can do to this. Um, yeah, my, my instant thought is to go to the Destroyer, um, which is, yeah, Decapitator. Uh, you can see that this one has CQ built in, which I was using that plugin anyways. So let's just, let's just listen. Let's add some harmonic content at this moment. It's going to sound brighter than I want it to. So we'll process it and then we'll, we'll use the master EQ or pre EQ to, to chill it out a little bit. Yeah. 
definitely like the body that's adding. That fizzy stuff on the top is, is coming from the lo-fi plugin. space instead and the music gets too quiet it all feels like a broken record yeah i really like how that sounds it sits really nice uh yeah the goal is to have that just be something that is it's noticeable throughout but like very very out of the way of the vocal uh the second element that is uh kind of the backbone of this song uh kind of a funny story behind it so it's these two tracks uh, how we recorded this, it was before I had, I now have an upright piano in my studio, but before I got an upright piano, um, we wanted to use a real piano on this song to give it just, you know, some realness. We were trying plugins and stuff and it just was not working. And so we went to a house that had an upright that was, you know, old, completely out of tune, you know, is very imperfect, not like a plug-in, uh, you know, v very imperfect. So what I did was I took my phone and then Bo's phone in my other hand and I did a stereo spaced pair uh, around my head and I just stood behind Bo and said, you know, play this chord. And he he's uh, very good at music theory and stuff. So he was just doing a bunch of different voicings and um, just to give us, uh, options. And so what it ended up being was, you know, you put the phone into the, uh, you, you've put both voice memos into Pro Tools, line them up. Mm -hmm. One more. And you have a, a stereo, stereo mic'd piano, which I, yeah, I really, really like how the iPhone mic sounds on piano and acoustic guitars and stuff. So turned out great. And uh, you'll hear actually my voice and his voice coming in and out during the song, uh, but it gave the song this really natural, real storytelling vibe. Yeah, it's it's it was almost it's almost like the song isn't taking itself too seriously, which I really like. Uh, so throughout, one more, one more. say <laughs> one more. And so I'm assuming with these plugins, I'm doing. <laughs> there's just a subtle EQ move happening. Just giving it a ton of mid-range and there's there's compression and stuff happening. So absolutely can do some cool stuff with Control Hub. Uh, let's go into, I know Colin Richardson just came out. Let's see, let's see if any um, guitar stuff sounds good on this. And we're gonna loop, gonna loop a part that has more chords happening. Here's the chorus. Instead, and the music gets too quiet. One directions, one directions, one directions. So yeah, I really like what that preset did. It feels like it's adding a nice warmth and presence to to the piano, without it getting too harsh. I did I did chill out. What is that? Three point six about, um, and then added just a little bit of uh, of mid range just to just to make it kind of bark a little bit more in the mix, but I really like how that sounds. It sounds great. Let's move on. Um, we have this other one that, let's just take the EQ off. So that's probably like the exact same hits. Uh, and you can see I intentionally 
um, made them kind of cascade, so it, it kind of goes across the speakers. It's very intentionally done um, poorly, so, so that it sounds like a sample, like a sampler being hit. So this I want just to be like very low-fi, um, mostly low mids. Um, I'm actually going to go to one of my favorite things. This is just, this is a golden preset that is inside of uh, Control Hub. Uh, well done, George. It adds so much goodness in the mid-range. Um, yeah, it's, it's just a fatso with the warmth on to, to the max amount. It is awesome. Um, I've actually never used a real fatso, but yeah, this this preset just it just sounds awesome. I love it. So we're gonna we're gonna make this even darker. Okay, and then let's listen to this in relation. Yeah, that's the vibe. space instead and the music gets too quiet it all feels like a broken record i change the song but i'm still tethered like it's all there is to me i try turning off repeat they say once always forever awesome it's sounding really good so here's just the main synths there's a stack. So there's this. This one's really quiet. Really just using that for attack. And there's kind of the main low one. So as you'll see, um, yeah, this is this is the real mix session. So th this is what I did in the song, um, other than obviously the control hubs that we just added. And uh, you can see that there's a lot of these that don't have any plugins on them. And the reason is because during production, I probably had the synth and then a couple EQ layers or you know uh, saturation and stuff, and all of that stuff happening is the sound. And so I just commit those down when I'm making the mix session and I don't worry about it ever again. And uh, when I when I start to mix, I, I go through and, and see if I need to do anything, but uh, it looks like a lot of this stuff I just left straight up. So um, yeah, other than I have a limiter happening on this guy, which it looks like it's just kind of barely touching it, um, which yeah, completely honestly, I have not been using L1 since I've start started to use uh, Control Hub. I am not lying. I use this limiter all the time, even if, if the rest of the plugin is doing nothing. I love how this limiter works. It is, uh, yeah, it, it does exactly what you want it to do and can do it really transparently and also can add a cool color if you want it to. It adds a really nice aggression. I mean, like I'm barely, I'm really barely doing anything. But I instantly, instantly like how that sounds. So yeah, don't underestimate uh, opening up Control Hub and not even going over to the artist packs and stuff. Just just playing with, with wh what is here and available because it all sounds really good. Let's move on. What is this Juno stuff? Yeah, very classic Juno sounding. Okay. So let's go in and let's just, let's look and see. Let's just try to use something that is not what it's uh, supposed to be used for and just see if we can make something cool.
I really like how that makes it sit. The last thing that is um, a really crucial element to the song is this string stack at the end. So let me just, I'll play the final chorus leading into it just so you can hear it in context and then we'll, uh, we'll uh, see if we can make it better. Man, I'm just such a fan. It's so good. Uh, so here it is solo, just so you hear it. It's kind of one of those, it's, it's a part that, that constantly is evolving and is playing the same melody over and over again through the chord progression, but it's adding higher and higher octaves and stuff. Super cool. Um, let's just go ahead and, and uh, bypass everything. I'll keep this instance of Soothe on. So let's listen to the strings without anything on them. So really cool, sounds great, uh, sounds really full. Realistically, that sounds better than it sounds with all of the plugins on. However, it's gonna be too tubby um, and undefined in the whole mix. So let's just listen to it without any plugins on in the mix. just kind of swallowing up the track. So first things first, let's go on the bus of just the strings and do an instance of control hub. And we're just gonna control it a little bit. Might actually add a little bit of reverb to this too. Let's see, some halls and we'll do medium. Ooh, that's really cool. It's a little too long though. Yeah, adds a lot of depth. Okay, so that move is doing a lot and it's raining in things uh, in a nice way. So now let's just go through and see if there's, there's individual elements of this stack that need to be dealt with. This is one that I would just add some, some saturation to. Let's see if there's something. Let's see if one of these console channels will do it. It's adding a little bit more um, bite than I want. Uh, let's go into the destroyer again and let's do some vocal presets.
I just love using like subtle stages of of saturation to get things to, I mean, one, it, it does increase perceived volume, which is great. And, and overall is, is a way of achieving a louder mix and a, and a louder finished product. But also it just helps elements sit into a mix better uh, because there's just more harmonic character and uh, harmonic content to kind of spread out over the whole frequency spectrum. Let's see what string two is. So kind of similar part. Let's see what this same preset sounds like. Again, just a little, a little bit of tape. This just needs some, some compression. Um, let's go ahead and leave this preset on. Cause it is adding some nice, um, some nice character. So now we have some stuff that is, that's not in this stack. And that is because I have kind of this string section panned off to the left. And then I have some other higher strings that are in the center and then horns are panned over to the, to the right. And um, yeah, it's, it's a good way of making fake string and horn elements sound real is to kind of spread them out across this, um, the stereo spectrum, but also to stack a lot of different plugins doing similar parts because, um, yeah, you're not just hearing, you know, one instance of, of a horn sample that doesn't sound uh, incredibly convincing. So let's see what this is. So this is kind of the main is the main um, high string that comes in towards the end. Let's see if anybody has, ooh, orchestral, perfect string section. Well, yeah, that makes it sound a lot more expensive right away. Listen to the life it adds. Just gonna chill out the reverb a little bit. Really good. Um, let's see, what is this guy? Okay. So it's actually just the harmony of this part. Let's see what that same. Man, I just love doing these videos. I love bypassing a bunch of plugins and replacing them with Control Hub and just seeing how close or how much I can improve something because already I'm really liking how this sounds. Uh, there's there's just a depth and like I said, that Aaron Sprinkle uh, string preset on violin instantly made it sound more expensive and like in, in a, you know, uh, non-quantifiable way. It's freaking awesome. Let's uh, let's go to the horns. Okay, so that's a pad that just stays low. Maybe we'll keep this EQ move from Pro Q. So we're starting with this, just so you're aware. And then let's add some color with something. See, um...
There's already plenty of low end happening with other synths and stuff, so it does not need to come from this this horn. It's also panned almost all the way to the right, so um, usually um, the lower the the lower the frequency, the more toward the center you you want to go. That's just like a general rule of thumb. I didn't have any plugins on these because I liked how they sounded out of the box. Yeah, it sounds so good. Let me move these plugins down so that we can just bypass all control hubs and uh, on just the strings and see what it sounds like. Let me back it up a little bit. So obviously, yeah, there's a there's a volume jump and a presence jump, but um, it's it's clearing out the mid-range, the like the lower mid-range, and it's adding this high-end aggression where at the end of this song, uh, if you listen to the, the whole song in context, um, yeah, the last chorus is supposed to feel like you're getting, you're getting wrapped up in the emotion of what Bo's singing about. And so the strings are supposed to be getting more and more overwhelming and um, uh, like, you can't ignore them. You know, you can't ignore the feeling. Thanks again for joining me for another episode. Uh, feel free to leave a comment below if you have any questions about anything that I went over today, or if you have any ideas for future episodes. I love to hear what you guys think, and um, we'll definitely take it into account in future videos. I do one of these videos every month, and so there's a lot of content to come this year, and um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. So be sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel to not miss out on any of the awesome content that uh, STL is putting out. And uh, yeah, until next month, I'll see you then.